Welcome to worship on this first day of August in 2021. I'm Pastor Connie Winter Yolberg and welcome to worship at King of Glory Lutheran Church. I am so excited that you decided to join us for this worship service. May this be a blessing for you and for your day. As we begin worship, let us just let our bodies relax into this. I invite you to breathe a big breath in and out and in and out. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, for all of us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the unity of heart and mind is like to that above. Before our Father's throne we pour our ardent prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our cares. We share our mutual woes, our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other flows the sympathizing tear. From sorrow, toil, and pain, and sin we shall be free, and perfect love and friendship reign throughout eternity. Throughout eternity. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Oh, 
Let us pray. God, the promises roll off your lips and into our ears. I will be with you. I will love you faithfully. I will be your God. My covenant is forever. We count on your words that flow from our ears to our hearts, and we are glad. We keep inventing ourselves, and our underneath selves turn out to be less than adequate, and we wish we were other than we are. We juggle your good purposes and our hidden yearnings and try to serve two masters, try to live two narratives, try to live two dreams, and we are weary. Because we know our hearts of anxiety so well, we seem fated to disease. But because we know your heart of fidelity so well, we know you will defeat our demons and make us new. We know about your abiding fidelity in Jesus of Nazareth. Give us patience and steadfastness as we process the ragged edges of our lives. Amen. A reading recorded in the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that, day, in that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, When he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity and to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel for today is recorded in the gospel of John, the sixth chapter. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has sent his seal. And they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom God has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and as is it written, as is it, it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. 
Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Welcome to the children's message at King of Glory Lutheran Church. Jesus did such a wonderful thing for us. Jesus came to earth and he did great things. He healed people, people that had this white skin, they had problems with their skin and he healed that. He healed the bent over woman who was bent over way far. He healed her. He healed somebody who couldn't see, who was blind. And then he also, with a whole bunch of people were following him, he had them sit down on a grassy area and he fed them food. And he also taught people on a hillside. He did a whole bunch of things for us. One of the things that he did is that he allowed people who were scared of him and scared of his power and who he was being the son of God, he allowed them to put him on a cross and kill him. But then, a few days later, he rose from the dead. Yes, God had him rise from the dead and he lived again. But you know, before all that happened and he was still with the people, he took his disciples and gathered them together one night and he said to them, take and eat. He took some bread and he said, let's gather together. Let's have a meal that we can be together with in the future. And he said, that's the one thing I really want from you all. Take bread, take a cracker, take a tortilla, take a, I don't know, a chip. Take it and break off a piece. And Jesus said, Take and eat, because this is an intimate thing for me. This is my body. This is, this is me. And we eat it. And Jesus said, take and eat. This is for you to eat. And then after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And now there was wine in his cup, but you can use whatever you have gather together juice or even water, or if you don't have any juice, but you have maybe a grape or an apple, or if you could make juice with an orange and drink the juice from that. Jesus said, take and drink. This is to remind you of what I did for you. Now this meal is really, really sacred. And sometimes, you know, it comes in a little thing like this with a little wafer here and juice on the bottom. And sometimes it comes like this with a little tiny wafer in the bottom and then juice up top. And sometimes we eat it this way. But know that this is an amazing gift that Jesus gave us. And the power in this meal is great. But what it does is it reminds us of all the wonderful things that Jesus did for us. But the big thing is that after he died, he rose from the dead. He forgives our sins. He loves us greatly. Such big, big, big love, bigger than, bigger than my arms, bigger than we can ever imagine. Just remember, eat at this meal. Do it with your parents, your friends, your brothers and sisters. Take out some bread, get some juice, get some water, get whatever you have and tell the story of Jesus. That's the important thing. And then eat that food and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. I have learned a lot about God by reading Exodus. Mostly I've learned about how God deals with humans. I've learned that for thousands of years, humans seem to float between belief and unbelief. God reacts to our, our lack of belief in God in so many ways. And I really appreciate the, how God creatively changed courses 
to try to reach us and to help us with our faith. This week, we are in Exodus 16, and the Israelites have been on the road in the wilderness for about two months. Their food is running out, but it seems that their jubilation of being saved from slavery and the Egyptian army has worn off. Their gratitude for God's power and might has fled like the wind. They have a lack of food. And they remember all the wonderful food that they had in Egypt, 57 different kinds of bread and flesh in their flesh pots, which is the fish, the fish they ate every day. They are murmuring about Moses and his brother Aaron. Now, some translate this grumbling or complaining. But is complaining out of the ordinary? No. The Psalms are filled with laments, like Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Psalm number 10, why, O oh Lord, do you stand far off? How long will you hide yourself from us? The Israelites were complaining to Moses and Aaron because they needed food to sustain themselves and for their families. And I think this is a legitimate complaint. This makes me wonder if Moses had already talked to God about this, or if not, hmm, why? God brought the people into the wilderness. What was God's plan? Dr. Sarah Kenick from Seattle Pacific Seminary writes this, the problem was not that the people murmur or complain. The problem is that they do not believe. They don't believe that God is actually going to take care of them. God took them out of Egypt, and that was a lot of work. It required 10 plagues. And then when the Egyptian leaders realized that their country was in ruins and the slaves had left and that they wouldn't have them to boost up their economy, they, they take their army and go right after them. And God, of course, moves the water in the Red Sea that the Israelites can walk through. And then when the Egyptian army follows their path, God then makes the water go back and the Egyptian army drowns. So the Israelites know that God has taken care of them in the past. But the issue is that they don't trust God to take care of them in the future. Well, that sounds a lot like us. Now, now this is getting kind of personal. I do admit that I don't understand why God waited until the, until the people grumbled about lack of food before God put the plan in place to have manna come in the morning and the quail at night. Perhaps God was just trying to see what the people did, how they reacted to that. But were there other options besides grumbling for the Israelites to do in this situation? How could they have learned and, and leaned on their faith in God to get an answer to their problem. Well, I think they could have added worship and prayer services to God to praise God for all God's works and saving them. And they could have had singing and loud praying and get out those instruments and just make a joyful noise to God. So I'm saying, yes, God, we know you're going to take care of us in the future. They could have done that. They could have gathered leaders like Moses and Aaron, the other folks, to talk about the issue of solutions to having food and having water. They could have emphasized their great love for God and their faith in their powerful God. And they could have asked Moses to have a discussion with God. They could have gathered several times a day in small groups or large, and they could have told the stories about God, how God is the one that created creation. And God worked through Noah and Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Rebecca and Jacob and Rachel and Leah and Joseph. And they could have focused on the fact that God made a covenant with both Abraham and Sarah. And with this, they were the chosen people of God. Instead of all these things, what did they do? They continued to complain 13 more times to Moses and about Moses. So 
how do we wander from our faith? Even as I continued to write this sermon, I realized that it was 1030 in the morning and I'd already complained three times. And I hadn't even seen a whole lot of people yet to tell you the truth. And the day was just starting. But it's easy, so easy to complain during our days. There's so much to complain about. Well, we've got the weather and we've got the government, our school system, our healthcare system, the pandemic, our neighbors, our relatives who we cannot control at all, food, weeds in our yard, and on and on and on. There are things I think that are worth complaining about, like injustice, people without food or water or health care or great education or racism. When we discuss these things, then our grumbling can lead to solutions and organized action to make these issues better. As Representative John Lewis said, Never, ever be afraid to make some good noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. Representative Lewis said these things from a viewpoint of being a child of God and of being a person of strong faith. You know, there's a difference between grumbling and complaining without a focus on God and a focus on faith and a grumbling where you live your faith in God with each breath that you take. So you may ask, what are we supposed to do? Jesus didn't live it, leave us with a curriculum or a blueprint or a list of bullet points of how to get faith. We have a lot of things to work with, I think. I heard once that there are so many books about Jesus and prayer and Christian theology in the Bible that that is actually, we, that is the most books on one topic that we have in the entire world. We want to know more about God. We want to know more about Jesus. We want to know more about the Holy Spirit. But sometimes faith is elusive. But I do believe that God has given us some ideas about how to have a strong faith. Now, prayer. Prayer is number one. We can do that anytime and any place. But we can also take some time and just be quiet and listen to God in response to our prayer times. What is God having to say to us? And reading scripture is wonderful. And it also leads to questions. And so being in a Bible study to talk about your questions is really helpful. And being of service to others is great because then we get closer to other people, other children of God. And, and in that, in those conversations, in those relationships, we then learn from each other. Worship is very helpful. I'm so glad that you're listening to this worship service because then we get to be, be learners here. We get challenged, we get to engage with other people. And I hope that you're engaging with people where you're at about this service. We get to receive communion and pray with others and for others. Now I know some of us think doubt is really scary, but I think doubt can be helpful. Doubt can lead us to questions and engage with others and it can lead to a spiritual awakening. Focus on God and love on our neighbor and gratitude toward God. It gets us out of all of our thoughts about complaining and all the things that we want to change, which are really out of our control. There is a copy of this service on our website. Because I've said a lot of different things, a lot of different bullet points. And if you'd like to be able to see them just and read them, it's on our website. You know, the Israelites didn't learn that God needed them to believe instead of grumbling. They never learned that. In our gospel today, in John 6, we are to believe in God and believe that God sent Jesus. The gifts that God sends us for the future 
is that through our belief in Jesus, it means that we're never going to be hungry and we're never going to be thirsty. And that means for food here, but also the thirst that we have for understanding and our belief in Jesus is the Christ. You know, God's going to take care of us. God has taken care of us in the past. God's doing it right now. And God will do it in the future. Belief? Jesus said for belief, it takes only the size of a belief that is as big as a tiny mustard seed. Thanks be to God. Amen. you to join with me as we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of all ages and all peoples, we are saddened by the pain, poverty, illness, and violence in our world. We pray for those who suffer from mental illness for those who are caregivers of those who have tested positive for COVID-19, for leaders in faith communities who give a great deal of time and energy working to follow your will, for immigrants who are trying to figure out life in a country that is so different from their homeland, for decision makers and business owners who seek justice for their employees, for children who are trying to stay safe in violent homes. For animals in this heat. For kind and generous people who help others who are without air conditioning. Help us to be people who love others enough to be generous and caring even when we are hot, cranky, hungry, and tired. Your love can help us through the tough spots. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And share that peace with whoever you are with this day. Or say peace back to me. And I hope that your day is filled with peace.
Accept, O Lord, the gifts we bring to place upon your table. We do not worship as we ought, but only as we're able. The vines were planted, seeds were sown, they grew in your good pleasure. What once was common daily food becomes a holy treasure. Our hopes and dreams, our toils and cares, we lift in prayer before you. Lord, by your grace, now come to us as humbly we adore you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we offer these gifts, confident that you have a purpose for them. Show us the possibilities for ministry that our financial support, our time, and our resources of education, experience, and love can give our faith community and our world. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body of one people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all its creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy Lord God, God of might and power, holy is the Lord. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of might and power, holy is the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna here on earth, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna here on earth, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, mighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son and so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which, in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Eat of this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, 
We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people, to be given your inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ has set the table. There is more than enough for all. I invite you to join with me now, inviting you to take your bread and your wine, for sharing with those in your household. Or if you're alone by yourself, give yourself this bread, this wine or juice. The body of Christ, broken for you. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you. Let us pray. 
Jesus, you said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. May this food remind us to center our days with peace, to model the life of the one who gives us life and forgiveness. Amen. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May God look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Son of God, eternal Savior, source of life and truth and grace, Word made flesh whose birth among us hallows all our human race. You are head who throned in glory for your own will ever plead. Fill us with your love and pity. Heal our wrong and help our need.